Okay, so welcome. Uh, let's go ahead and get into example number four. Now, what we're going to do for example number four is learn how to evaluate the following piecewise functions. And what we have previously worked on was just graphing the piecewise functions. And really the kind of difference is we're looking for the value of the function for these given values. Now, I'm not sure why I didn't include equal signs for the rest of them. So if we look at this first function, uh, we have f of x equals um, this with three different rules, and each rule has its own restriction. Now, I actually made a mistake here. This should actually be less than, so let's go ahead and fix that there. So for this rule, x plus 2 squared is only true for when x is less than negative 2. In this example, we have x plus 2 um, is only true for the x values between negative 2 and 0. And the square root of x is only true for x values that are greater than 0. So when we're looking for evaluating of f negative 3, we want to use the rule that falls within the restriction. And you can see that negative 3 only falls within res this restriction. So therefore, we're only going to evaluate it into this rule. And a way we can kind of make sense of this is to kind of look at the graph here. And if we look at the graph, which I created, which uh, is, has to repopulate because I messed it up. Sorry about that. So if I just go ahead and um, click on A, which is that answer, you can see here when we look at negative 3, right, looking at negative 3, you can see there's a value on there. But for these other two rules, the x plus 2 as well as the square root of x, negative 3 is not a point on their graph. So when we're looking for the value, what we're doing is we're looking for, you know, what is the y value, basically, or the output value when you plug in negative 3. Well, you're only going to plug negative 3 into this equation because negative 3 doesn't make sense for these because their domain was restricted. So w again, negative 3 falls within only this rule, so I'm only going to plug in f of negative 3 into the top rule. So therefore, to evaluate this, I'm just going to plug in negative 3 plus 2 squared. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to equal a negative 1. Let's fix that. Therefore, that's going to be a negative 1 squared, which equals 1. And you can see, you can kind of verify that by the graph. Um, if we look at negative 1, now again, we can look back at the graph, and if you want to follow the link, you know, feel free. But if we look at negative 1, you can see, well, negative 1, which one of these constraints does it fall within? You can see it falls within this constraint, so therefore we're going to plug it in to only this equation. So I'll do negative 1 plus 2 equals, again, positive 1. And here we have f of 1, which falls within this constraint. So when I plug in 1 into the bottom equation, or bottom rule, you can see, again, I have 1. So each of these values all equal 1, but they, I had to plug in a different input value into a different function to be able to obtain that. The biggest mistake that I see students do is they'll take one of these input values and plug it into all of them. And again, that doesn't make sense because these restrictions tell us when each of these equations is going to be true for the given piecewise function. All right, so let's go and take a look at the next example. And um, if we want to go ahead and take a look at the you know, graph. Um, so we have negative 2, 0, and we have 3. So let's go and take a look at that. Um, see when that would work out. So that's going to be B. Okay. So in this case, uh, we have. I thought I. Nope. Okay. So here we have this function, which is less than 0. And then we have that function, which is greater than 0. Notice that 0 is included for this function. Uh, and then it's not included over here. There's, there, there's that hole. So we have the x cubed, and then we have the 3x minus 2. So notice that that hole is there because x is greater than 0 here. But here, x is included because it's less than or equal to uh, x cubed. So if I'm looking at negative 2, obviously negative 2 is less than 0. So I'm just going to plug the negative 2 into the top rule. And that equals negative 8. And again, just to kind of like look at that, um, if we wanted to go over and look back at that uh, graph here, you can see at negative 2, like we are dealing with the point negative 8, right? At negative 2 get really close, you see we're at negative 8. So therefore, that again makes uh, sense. f of 0, now this is important because we noticed there was a jump discontinuity, right? Here, it's equal, and then here, it's not equal. So therefore, we're only going to plug 0 into the bottom function. So therefore, I'm going to have um, 0 cubed, which just equals 0. 
And then f of 3, you can see that's for values that are greater than 0. So that's going to be absolute value of 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9. Absolute value of 9 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Uh, working on the last example here is, again, we only have two equations here. Now, the interesting thing on this one is it's, remember, this is kind of creating like a, a hole here, right? So if we look at this equation, uh, I kind of detailed it out there. But as we look at this equation, we have the uh, square root function being reflected about the y-axis, the mean shifted to the right. There's a hole at its endpoint, but then we have a value here. So uh, we have a value at uh, x equals 1 for that. Even though there's a hole in the function, there is a value where it is uh, defined. So when I go ahead and evaluate this, if I want to evaluate for f of negative 1, so this is saying use the square root of 1 minus x for all values except x cannot equal 1. OK, well, so if I'm going to plug in negative 1 here, I'm going to plug in 1 minus negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 is 2, so the square root of 2 is just going to leave that as a square root of 2 f of 1, well, I can't use 1 for this function, so I have to go here. And this one says when x equals 1, your value is 2. So that one was kind of easy. And then here we have uh, 2. So this is for all values that uh, can I equal 2. But however, when I plug in 2, even though it says you can't use 1, when I plug in uh, 2, I get the square root of negative 1, which under real number systems is not going to be defined. So therefore, we'll just say undefined. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's kind of like the basics here of being able to evaluate your piecewise functions. And next, what we'll do is learn how to evaluate our piecewise functions.